So one of the things, Dan, that we tried to do is make everything intentional in this office. Mm. And so we wanted it to be purposeful for our staff. We wanted people to see the soul of our company. Mm. So this rope is actually a tugboat rope. And, uh, but they fashioned it in the form of what's called a mula, mula which yeah. is a prayer bracelet. What a mula does from a prayer standpoint is it's supposed to bring you focus. Mm. And so the reason that we brought it in here is we wanted staff when they come in, that this is a very focused place. Yes. They're trying to do something and that's symbolic The minute that. they walk through the door. The minute right? they walk through the door, they, they go, focus. oh, that's the mula, I have to focus. Love so it. their mindset changes overnight. Mm. We have a variety of art installations with names over it. Like this is intellect or some people call it the big head. Mm. And what we wanted to do is have it symbolic of all the attributes and hallmarks that we have with the company. So this is... Uh, it's purposely, it has the visual effect. It does. It's actually got uh, a very specialized paint behind it, so it actually kind of moves with you and it's reflective. But the reason we had this is that we wanted to show one of the characteristics of our staff is we, we want big head people. We want people with super intellects. And mm. so that's symbolic right when you walk in the door that this is, this is really important to our company to have intellect. And then we have art from all over the world. This is the Moroccan basketball team kind of have the, this intervention, but it's a symbolic of teamwork. This piece right here that's coming off the stairs. Yeah, it's like it's falling. Right? It is, and it's intentionally falling. Huh. And the reason we did that is it's a beautiful piece of art. We have this beautiful staircase that we built. And again, this is where people come up from the garage or walk in the front door. And the symbolism of it is, hey, even though we're a great company, we're a beautiful company, one misstep, one tragic step, you can come tumbling down. This is what we call the purpose wall. And again, it's, you see this big headline purpose here. Mm. And one of the things that what we're trying to do is every year we do a thing called change a life or transform a life. And these are all people that uh, are, we have nine teams and they have a competition and we give them $500 in their iPhone and we say, go out and videotape how you transform a life. And these are all stories of people. This is a guy that we help with a kidney transplant. This guy, their, their house burned down in the Napa fire. Um, these are, this, this uh, girl, her mother died of cancer and we helped them with schooling. So these are all things that our teams have done and the pictures on it, the stories on the back. And again, we're a very philanthropic company and we're always trying to help not only our own staff, which is very important to us, but the community at large. So this is, this is a big thing for us. And having the value of the staff also giving back, encouraging them. Yeah, to yeah. And again, you know, one of the things we want to show is that we want the soul of the company to be, you know, omnipresent. Yes. So when we did that, everybody, you know, a guy that's new to us, company's interviewing, he's like, wow, you guys did this? This is cool. Mm. This woman didn't have water in her house for four years and uh, she, she couldn't afford to have a plumber come in. We came in, diagnosed it. We found that the main water line going into her house was broke. Mm. We, we hired a construction company to fix the main water line. And this is her turning on the faucet for the first time in almost, almost four years. So she would carry water in a bucket from a neighbor's house to flush the toilet, to make dinner, to do everything. So just remarkable transformative stories. Remarkable stories. This is, uh, this is what we call the countdown clock. I love this. And, you know, we were talking about time earlier and how yeah. time is so very, very important. So what we had uh, our engineers do is set this towards uh, an average life expectancy, which is about 80 years of age. And you can see how many hours you have once you get up here. So uh, the day we opened this office, we set it to 29,220 and we started counting it backwards. And it's such a visual reminder that when you walk up, you see the heading, make, make today count. That every day, you don't get that, that second back down. That second's not back. So you gotta make every day profound. You've gotta make every day count. And you make it so big and so prominent in the it, office. It's prominent and it's, it's this incredible reminder that what I'm doing this very second better be important because that's the only thing that I can obtain. Time is just so, critically, critically important. So when people come in, this is this visual reminder. I've actually seen people standing here with tears running down their face. Mm. This, this tells you how much time you have left, you know? And so, you know, if you come in here and you're 70 years old, you know, you may only have 4,000 hours left here, you know, 
4,000 days or, you know. Mm. So it, it kind of reminds people, wow, I, I need to make my life really important right Life now. is short. Yeah. Mm. This is our development wing, and this gives you an idea of some of the properties that we have in, in the way. So these are all properties that are, are getting done. This is almost also like a vision board to me, right? Yeah. Like you build it, you can see they walk by. I'm gonna show you something that probably no one would show anyone. I'm gonna show you our bathrooms. So, um, anybody in here? So we, we wanna make, uh, we wanna make every day <laughs> this exciting is a, for This people. is a bar. <laughs> so go and install it and close the door and look in there. What so, the? You know, oh, wow. so e everything, you know, is baseball oriented um, <laughs> and, you know, it's fun for people. Oh. And so, wow. Jenny, can you see if anyone's in the women's bathroom? The or women's what? different? The women's is very different. Okay. So, wow. So the women is all, you know, very upscale, you know, a lot of pinks, uh, fashion kind of designer oriented. Uh, because again, we want every minute of our staff's life to be fun, to be exciting, that this is, this is their home that they're spending nine, 10 hours a day at. We want it to have great value and wow. great fun. Wow. So even within their bathroom time, it's a unique experience. Put so, a lot of thought into this. Yeah, it's all very purposeful. So. This is uh, now tell me about this. The SUV of its time. SUV, yes. Uh, but it was built in 1923. Um, uh, Macklemore, the rap singer, is a friend of mine, and he invited me to this uh, event. And uh, this this antique store that they have an the event at, they were raising money for these clinics they're building around the world. And I said, Lori, will you sell that truck? Because they were donating 15% of everything they sold to this charity. charity yeah. He goes, well, the truck's not really for sale. And I go, oh, come on. And then we convinced him to sell it. And so we bought it, and they got 15% of the total price to the charity. But I bought it as an ode to my mom, because it was, it was the same year she was born. She was born in 23. And I thought, well, this would be a good reminder. And it's such a fun thing to put in the lobby that people just come in and they smile. And different holidays will decorate it and so on. Like so, Christmas. Yeah, exactly. I can see that. So it's a lot of fun. This is a lot of fun. So come on this way. This is our own cafeteria. This is our this own is restaurant. This is a full blown yeah. cafe. So we serve breakfast and lunch in here every day. Mm. It, the most expensive thing is $5. So people don't have to leave here. These plants in here, we're a big believer in a concept called biophilia. Mm. And I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but essentially biophilia was invented was used in hospitals when they found out people that had, had operations that were coming out of post-op, essentially, if people were looking out on gardens or flowers or whatever, as opposed to inanimate man-made things like a brick building, that they would heal faster. Mm. And so scientists started looking at this and saying, is this any correlation or is this just an accident? Mm. And so when they discovered that, they discovered that, no, if you're looking out at nature or if you're in nature, mm you will actually heal faster than someone who's looking out on an inanimate object like a brick or a rock or whatever. It also seems to me that you focus so much and spend so much effort on the well-being of the staff and yeah. employees, right? And that I think gets transferred to also when you work with your clients. It's yeah, well, you, staff is your most important thing you can do, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's more, way more important the building you build or, you know, the whatever. So you got to put a lot of energy and enthusiasm into how do I make these people, you know, really delighted. And so what we actually found through biophilia is this actually affects people's immune system. Mm. The oxygen that's, that's emitted from this actually helps your immune system and people get sick less while they're so around this. They're more this. productive, they're more, they're more they're, focused. They're more productive, but this actually physically affects their immune system. Wow. In fact, in Japan now, they have a concept called forest bathing. And the doctors are writing prescriptions for people to go walk for two hours in the forest because it's helping them not get ill and, and helping their immune system. I'm going to take you through uh, a little bit of our workout area. What about the cell phone wall? Oh, we just did that as an ode to technology. So we got cell phones going back to the 70s. And yes, there. I um, remember one of those. Yeah, the big hand the, the, yeah. the, the break. Yeah. So. We put a lot of time and energy into wellness, as you said. So this is, uh, this is our gym. 
And this is an interesting piece of equipment. It's actually a balance piece and you get in it and you put on these virtual goggles and you can actually fly through the air. Yes, and, like, a, uh, like virtual reality. Yeah, but here's something unique. Yeah, it's, um, it's, is this the floating? Yeah, this is the float pod. So this is not something you'll probably see in the average sure office. <laughs> so this is all salt water. So what these float pods do is they actually help people reduce stress. They take down blood pressure. Um, it's an immense relaxation tool for people. You close it, it gets dark, you float on top because it's salt water. Yeah. And so you'll stay in there for about 20 or 30 minutes and everybody just chills out. Okay. So, so do the staff come here um, after work? Or they, they can come, come here anytime, it's all free. Mm -hmm. If you were to go downtown and use this, it's about $50. Yes. So it's free to do here. Wow. We have Reiki in here, we have reflexology, we have full-blown massage. So once uh, a week, they can vote. Once a week, it's all free for our staff, mm -hmm. they come in. And this is, you know, we've been voted, last year in 2017, we were voted one of the top 50 companies to work for in yeah. America out of 750,000 companies nominated. Wow. Um, we've been voted best company to work for 15 times by our staff. But these are the kinds of things that you have to do to make those, have those kind of accolades. So, mm. and so, the Buddha. And the Buddha, yeah. The Buddha is a great uh, example of what we want for people, rest and relaxation. That's why we have the big shh on the door. Once they come, it's like a, like a century, right? Sanctuary. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to show you something that you'll probably not find in any corporate environment. A treehouse. Huh? Treehouse. So, we, um, we wanted our staff to have an environment that was fun. And when we looked at this, one of the things we said is, What's, what can we have that's childlike, that's fun? Um, and so we went to the city and we said, can we build a tree house? And they said, you can build it if it's under 300 square feet. You don't have to need a permit. Okay. So this is 298 square feet. Mm. And uh, <coughs> we'll go up there. It's become so popular that now our vendors have heard about it. And they say, can we meet in a tree house now? So you go up there, there's candy up there. Come on up. It may be locked, I don't know. Ah, could it open? <laughs> oh, this is so much fun. So we're in the middle of downtown Bellevue. Yes. And, you know, we're 25 feet in the air. Yes. And we're in the middle of a treehouse. I think we can do the interview right here. Right? You can do the interview right, right here. Can get some candy. Yeah, have some candy. <laughs> this is so great. this has become really popular. You wouldn't think, you know, up here in the middle of the trees, you see the skyscrapers over there. Mm. You feel like you're in the woods. You do. So The trees? Yeah, mm. it's a great thing for staff to get a break. They want to just come and if chill it's, out. If you just walk around, come yeah. up here. Yeah. We have a little meditation area to the, right. the two goddesses uh, right. that uh, are on the, the poles and people can come there, sit in the grass. In the summertime, we have croquet and volleyball and all kinds of stuff out there. Mm. So it's lots of fun. When you build this, did you have all this in mind or is it piece by piece? We had a basic vision in mind of what we wanted to do. Mm. And we knew we wanted to incorporate a lot of Northwest woods. Mm. Um, like the aquarium uh, we have here. The aquarium is, I don't know if, if you remember back in the 70s, they used to have lava lights. Uh, well, the aquarium is a calming tool. So that's, again, very intentional to have this mm. because, and it's outside the classroom. So it's a great way they to calm people. And, you know, they kick their shoes off, come up with their laptop, just sit here in a very calming influence. Um, Even the wallpaper, I mean, that's like yeah. the ocean, right? Yeah, mm. so that's what we wanted to do, have this very calm kind of marine flavor. Nice. And I like how each area is quite different. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's like almost a, like an it has area. Its own theme. Like a like an area in the house where you're saying, okay, well, this is one room and it has this function, and this room yes. has a different function, and that's what we tried to do. But you can see even optics of different places. Like mm. we call this the bubble gum girl. Yes. So even if you come upstairs, how the art is strategically placed here. And you even this, have like people can sit here if they want. Right. Mm. Yeah. This is a really interesting piece. Um, this is humor, mm, yeah, and yeah, yeah. if you read the quote, Everyone you meet in life is fighting a battle you know nothing about. 
behind always. Yeah. Mm. So this, Robin Williams was a big bicyclist. Mm. He had over 80 some bicycles. Right. This bicycle was his, it was handmade for him. Wow. You can see hand built for RW. Yes. And it was a replica of a Derringer bicycle that was done in the, um, the original bicycle was done I think in the 1920s. Mm. But this is a tribute to him and you're gonna wanna get this on video. So this is about two and a half minutes long. Mm. So this is something that we, again, we're, to, we're seeking the profound for people. Mm. And again, the goal is to have people kind of see our soul. So watch this. You know, as we come to the end of this phase of our life, we find ourselves trying to remember the good times and trying to forget the bad times. And we find ourselves thinking about the future. We start to worry thinking, what am I going to do? Where am I going to be in 10 years? But I say to you, hey, look at me. Please, don't worry so much. Because in the end, none of us have very long on this earth. Life is fleeting. And if you're ever distressed, cast your eyes to the summer sky when the stars are strung across the velvety night and when a shooting star streaks through the blackness turning night into day. Make a wish. Think of me. Make your life spectacular. I know I did. Profound, huh? Mm. I can see anyone who walks through the building where they can see the clock, the theme, every little thing yeah. is, it's, it's a reminder of how precious life is yeah. and how short life is. So this young man, brief story on him, he came to work one day when we had an event here, he was drunk, he had an alcohol problem. I called him into my office one day. He didn't know who I was and I asked to meet him because I saw him. And uh, I asked him if he had a drinking problem. He said, yeah, I did. I said, have you ever been to treatment? He said, yeah, it doesn't work. And I said, well, you have two choices. You can go to treatment, I'm gonna fire you here on the spot. And so he goes, okay, I'll go to treatment. I go, good, you're going right now. So we load up his stuff and I said, I'm gonna change your life if you go through treatment. Went to treatment, was in treatment 30 days, was a model treatment guy, came out of treatment, and uh, he, we picked him up and we started taking him to his new home. And he's like, well wait, I, don't, I live in downtown Seattle. We go, no, not anymore, he lives in Issaquah. So we had him live over one of our buildings and he became a model, a model employee ended up being a motivational speaker. Mm. He had had cancer when he was 16 and uh, he only had one leg. And so about two years after he got out of treatment, his cancer came back and he passed away. So my wife and I mentored him for about two or three, two or three years mm. and his family gave us these crutches as a mentor to him. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. Mm. You like uh, ideas can happen in the most unlikely places. Anybody in here? So this is all about cars. Oh, this is the car. This is the Formula One bathroom. Um, and again, you know, we just try to make it fun for everyone. Wow. And, uh, you know, just make it unique. <laughs> so all the doors have steering wheels and stuff, you know. Again, every experience, every time they get, we want to make it unique for them. <laughs> Anybody in here? Hello? So these are all great women of history. Oh, wow, I love so, this So uh, we've, we've made this up, and all our conference rooms are named after great women of history. So we have Amaya Angelou and Mother Teresa and Michelle so on. Obama, Diana, yeah. And yeah. Yeah, Mother Teresa. So, you know, we have, we have uh, wow. about 75% of our workforce is women, so we wanna pay great homage to them and, and make them feel as though they're special, which they are. This is an installation, another hallmark here, which we call Disruption. Wow. And uh, Wow. So this is a motorcycle that I own. I bought it from a friend of mine. 
In 2010, it won Most Beautiful Motorcycle in America. Mm. Um, it's almost 12 feet long. You'll never see anything like it. And we wanted people to know that we're disruptive thinkers, that we wow, think differently. This is beautiful. This so we commissioned an artist, and yeah. we said, we're going to take the, some of the greatest Mark, thinkers in the world. Jeff. Yeah. Uh, Howard. Yeah. Bill Gates. Yeah. Steve and Elon Musk. Yeah. Mm. And so we said, we're going to make them into our own motorcycle gang called the Disruptors. Mm. And put them in motorcycle gear. and. Uh, Say, well, these are disruptive thinkers of the world. This is how we think, and mm. they join our gang. But you, I could see how you value, you value the, the mission, the purpose, also, but value intellect. Yeah. Right. You yeah. want smart people. Yeah, and we have from every one of these companies, with the exception of maybe Facebook, every one of these companies, we have staff represented that worked at these companies. Mm. I, I don't know if we have anyone from Facebook. I know we do from all. Maybe the soon. Maybe soon. Maybe yeah. Maybe soon. So, you know, again, what we're trying to do is show these are the values we have and this is who we want in our company and these are, these are the things that are important this to us. This is so cool. If you want to think like this, then join our company. Mm. So, again, big, big part. Well, who doesn't want to? You've got the spa, you've, <laughs> yeah. got, the, you've got everything. Now this, uh, you've heard about Epic. This is our diversity wall. And so, one of the things that, that we are trying to do is um, show diversity in our speakers and who we have. And oh, so, so any of the speakers who spoke on, on all these, Epic? Yeah, all these guys have wow. been at Epic at one time okay. or another. So, the Sly, right? Yeah, Sly yeah. was here last year, yeah. Deepak Chopra, Deepak Chopra Carlos Santana, Sharon Stone, mm -hmm. um, Gina Davis, Susan Sarandon, um, that's a football player, mm. that's the woman in Splash, um, you know, S Suzanne Summers, uh, Wayne Tan Dyer, Wayne Dyer, Tanya Van Wayne Dyer was actually a, a mentor of mine. Mm. I mean, you every can, year, you add new, every year new we have people. seven to ten people. Yes. Uh, this year we had Michael J. Fox. Ah. Uh, so every year, you know, there's been well over a hundred of them now. This is very inspirational. Yeah. This is our executive conference room. It's called the Mother Teresa room. And again, we try to put a spin on everything. So. This table was carved out of a, a tree that was in the San Diego fire about 10 years ago. Mm. Only t table like it in the world. It's got bronze inlays in it and so on. Mm. This is the, a cloud light that we had made. So a lot of design influence is very, very unique. This is the timeline of our company. Wow. And so it's hard to say, well, this is when our company started and this is what we did and this is how much money we made and this is how many employees we had and these are the awards. So this is a great visual representation. Mm. So well, we started here, this was my partner, we had zero revenue, and we started in an office over a deli. Mm. That's when we started. With, with seven people. With seven people. And then the next year we had 500,000, we had 145 people. Wow. Then we went to 7 million, 20 million, 38 million, 61 million, 110 million, 128 million. And then my, I bought my, my partner out, he took some of the buildings. So we dropped back 30 million because he took $30 million worth of properties. And then we built it back up, um, you know, and we, had, we don't have 18 in here, but we're, we're now, we're about a, maybe over a quarter billion dollars in revenues. In revenue, okay. About two, three two. to four billion in real estate. We need real estate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this, this is an out of date count. We have, you know. I love this. Probably this, 20. Is, this is so. And you can so see awesome. this is like we won the National Design and Award. And I like how even if any new uh, team members right. come in. This is they, the history. This is history. You want to know where yeah. we came from? Yeah. You want to know our values? Like right. even someone brand new walk through the right. office within a couple hours. Like, yeah, and, I know if and, I belong to this place or not. And even the CEO, when you forget, you're like, oh, when did we sell those properties? Oh, it was back in. Right. Yeah. And how much was that? Oh, it was this much. I could see even with the executive team, you walk through this. Hey, do we remember back yeah. in 2009? Yeah, yeah it keeps right? you grounded. Yes. It really does. Because this, this is your living history that's here. Wow, this is so nice. This is a, our foundation called yeah. State of Soup Foundation. That's right. And now, talk is, to me about this. This is a well, story. Well, um, I was kind of a juvenile delinquent, and my mom decided, because I was getting poor grades and too many fights and had too many girlfriends. Uh, same here, same here, did all that. <laughs> yeah, I'd been there, done that. And she was gonna put me in a private school, but it was 100 miles away from our home. Mm. So we moved, I lived with a family by myself for the, just from the church that took care of me for six months. And my mom was a line cook, so she moved to the town that we lived in. And she came home one day and she walked in the door and she was kind of pale looking and she said, we don't have any money, we're out of money, I don't get paid for for 15 days, we're out of food. I'm like, oh, what's new, you know? And I was being a smart aleck kid. 
And she walked over to the refrigerator with this little one room apartment. And she walked in the refrigerator and she opened it up and that little light bulb came on and I can still see it in my head. And she looked in there and she had a cube of butter, an onion, and a little can of condensed milk. Mm. And she said, I'm gonna steal potatoes from work. And you know, I made some smart aleck comment, well, potatoes, hell, steal steaks, you know? And she gave me a good whack across the face. And she said, you know, I've never stole anything in my life, but I'm, I have to steal from my son to eat. And so she stole those, we went at four in the morning, big five gallon tub, probably stole 25, 30 potatoes. And she made potato soup for, for two weeks. And so, you know, it was an issue of, uh, she would, she would tell me all these stories and you know you have so much confidence you're going to lead some great organization you know you're going to have all kinds of employees that work for you but you know here's a here here's the thing i want you to remember always remember that you had to eat potato soup so mm. it, it it's it's an anchor to humility about yes. that that yes. um and so you know when we started ages the first thing i did is form our own foundation called the potato soup foundation and we've mm. we've helped hundreds of people that's why we have dollar meals you know, no one ever goes hungry. You can take home a, a meal for four people for four dollars. Mm. Um, we give emergency assistance for housing, for utilities, for cars, for deaths, for medical expenses. So, so it's almost like anyone is going through that tough time. Hopefully, they don't have to do what your mom did. Right. Stealing exactly. Them. But here's the greatest thing that happened, Dan. The greatest thing that happened is we told our employees, "Hey, if you want to contribute even 25 cents a paycheck, you yeah. can." Um, today, we have almost 500 employees that give automatic payroll deduction to the Potato Soup Foundation. Wow. 500. Wow. And so, we've, cre we've created a sustainable organization mm. for people who've never given to anything in their life, in their entire life, they're, they're giving to this organization. So, we formed this community of giving, mm. which I think is really phenomenal. It's very powerful. Very, very powerful. Yeah. Mm. So, let's keep going. This is all recruiting in here. and. We have recruiters. Um, this is called Un uh, Umbrella Alley. So this is a great checkout place, meditation, quiet place, people take a nap, whatever. All this art came from Berlin. Um, this is our chief people officer. And this is, um, this is one of what we call our service hallmark. Mm. And as I said, I'm a big JFK collector. And this, these, are, this is a le these are handwritten letters that JFK actually wrote. Um, Ted Kennedy Jr. came and visited me, and that was a note that he wrote me. These are bills that JFK actually passed and wrote, family photos. Mm. So JFK in the United States was representative of being great with service. He started the Peace Corps and so on. And you know, is he, he, would you say he's one of your role models? You know, he was killed on my fifth birthday, November 22nd, mm. 1963. So I came home from kindergarten expecting to have a big party, and my mom was ironing and crying and saying, oh, you know, we're not gonna have your party, and I threw a fit. And I'm like, what, I was, I've dreamed of cupcakes all day long. Mm. And she said, no, very bad things happen. And we were Irish Catholic, and so he was my mom's hero, and so mm. this created an indelible impression in my life. And to this moment today, um, you know, I have one of the largest JFK collections in, in the country, so. Mm. There's some in the office, some, I guess some at, at a home? Big, I have a whole room in my house. In house. So come on in, this is my office. Um, Lot, lots of stories about pictures and meeting, you know, everyone from Obama to Oprah. That's Chris Christie, that's the old Pope. Um, you know, these are a variety of people that have supported us and, you know, come to Epic. And I like how you can also see the tree house. You see the tree house, that was important to me, so. Again, the family picture. Family picture, yeah. Mm. Grandchildren pictures, my wife's pictures. So come on in, sit down.